So battle scenes can be really intimidating, they can get really complex really fast, so my recommendation generally for these are to keep things as simple as you can, to keep the focal point in mind, and to know what that story aspect is that you really want to embellish and uh, show. So yeah, this painting overall I think is, it's going in a fine direction. Uh, as we could see here, it's got some nice cool colors, a pretty dynamic composition, but my first move generally is with something like this is to make it feel a little more dynamic. I want to add uh, a bit of a Dutch angle. I'm going to take the canvas, I'm going to tilt it. That automatically, the angle of it automatically makes things a little bit more uneasy. And when I tilt it so that the main character, the guy in red, is a little higher, it's going to empower him a little bit more. So uh, again, after doing that, the first thing I really need to do is to uh, kind of fix the rest of the composition that got all jacked up as a result of switching the canvas. Alternatively, the other way to do it would be to expand the canvas, uh, the canvas's orientation. But I want to work within the the original size of the uh, the artist's uh, dimensions. So yeah, I'm going to stick with that and kind of fill in the blanks. So yeah, I already like uh, the color palette uh, he's chosen here. So I'm kind of picking from that and I'm going with it, filling in uh, some of those areas that need a little bit more help after um, my uh, compositional switches. So I'm adding a little bit of atmosphere in places and I really want to embellish uh, the shapes in this, the shape of this main character, the shape of the uh, characters that he's fighting. So again, I want to add a little bit of a story moment to this. I want to make it like this guy's already knocked down one of this guy's best commanders. Like, you know, he, he hit him down, he's uh, he's all wounded, he's bleeding out, and now, since the focal point's really kind of in the perspective of that knight that's really in the foreground, he's next. And it's hard to kind of show terror and expression in heavily suited dudes. So we could show that a little bit with the body language. So this guy's kind of down, he's holding up his sword, and, and, and that's the kind of acting I'm trying to get into this to help convey a little bit more of that drama and to uh, play up the um, the severity of what's about to happen to this guy if he fails taking down this elite dude with the cool red capes. So I'm kind of, you know, I'm just kind of scribbling in. And like I scribble anything in, in these scenes, I try to look for shapes as they would play towards that composition. So I, I already have the right hand corner of the composition completely filled, so I'm leaving a little bit of room to breathe on the left here as it's currently orientated. So I'm not gonna stick him in completely in the corner. I have him a little bit off, and now I can just kind of pop a few highlights and see generally if that works. And if that's something that works, then that's something I can commit to a little bit better later on. But you know, I'm, I'm sticking within that shape. I'm adding a little bit of that metallic or irony uh, texture to it, but I, I'm not gonna go crazy with it yet because at this point, I'm not sure if I'm gonna commit to it. So yeah, I'm gonna get the guy's cape in. Uh, maybe ha having a big dent. It, when it comes to detailing, put a big dent in his helmet armor or you know, maybe embellishing that it is his shield he's holding up in front of the guy and that he's going down. That that might be something to express, but. Yeah, for now, I'm just going to leave him as is, as a new element that I introduced, and see if I can get some of the other elements working a little bit better in unison here. So I want to move this guy, again, slightly over to the right, just slightly. I feel it'll open things up a little bit more on the left, so I can pop a few more other characters. Again, when I do these sort of things, if especially when it comes to design and composition, I'm looking for the rule of... Uh, threes a lot, or, or the rule of odds. I the, It started out as one soldier, right? I added in a second guy, so that that's even. I want to get things back into that realm of odds, just innately. Uh, I've just always been taught it's better to have things in odd numbers where you have a little bit of creative control. And since I do here, I want to add a third soldier kind of over this guy's shoulder, doing a little bit something in the background. I just think it'll help a little bit with the balance. So yeah, I'm filling in this dude's head, and kind of erasing a little bit of that guy's antlers, and I'll, I'll get back to that a little bit later. 
and I'm just painting in a little bit of that fabric, which is something I def I highly reference in, in this particular case. Look up like Renaissance fair photos, you know, those medieval fairs and, and the jousting tournaments and just like battle reenactment things. People get a lot of pictures of that and they're they're pr they're pretty helpful for getting some of these situations in. I mean, alternatively, the other thing to really good uh, to reference really well is just battle scenes in general, like cinematography, scenes from Lord of the Rings, scenes from The Hobbit, scenes from any movie that's got a big medieval fight in it. So see, just having a little bit of this character in here to the third, I mean, I, I, I originally wanted to make him a little bit bigger, but I, 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 I kind of settled with him at that size. I, I feel that that, that works well. Because the other three characters, the, the two dudes with the spears and the guy to the left, of this dude with the horn I'm drawing on, that's another trifecta set back there. So it's like a three on three. This guy's already going down. And I'm trying to really just embellish this moment. I, the antler horns are fine. This is going to be a subjective thing and it's going to come down to the individual. I would want something stronger, something more warlordy rather than yeah, just some more delicate antler, you know, antlers. They're, they're, they have their moments, I think, if done right. But for me, I think the easier and more direct solution to empower this guy would be make more warlordish type of horns and on that note uh his cape is just I mean, it feels heavy and it's just dragging down on him i want to add a little bit of flow and a little bit of movement into that cape like he is like ready to charge and and, and cleave this guy's head off so i mean I'm, a little trial and error it, this is not easy and flowing fabrics of this sort by, by no means for me is something I'm really good at, but if I block it in, I can make some decisions, assess it, and go back later and get the reference I need to really uh, push the idea. But at least in terms of this phase, like that, this will help me kind of like get a little bit of that uh, rigidness out of it. All right, so I wanted to add a little bit more detailed designs to the, the, the soldier's helmets. They are a little on the generic side. You'd, you'd want to add some kind of design motif or go in and chisel out the shapes just a tad more, again, with reference or, or do a, a study on the side. Uh, they, did, they need a little bit more detail. Well, they're going to need detail anyway, but I definitely recommend adding some kind of embellishment that will make it distinctive. Uh, so now I, I generally go in and I, I select parts of the painting. When all the pieces are there, uh, I try to think of the larger shapes. And I'll once I have them selected, I, I go to levels and I like to balance things out. Add lights where they need to be. Make shapes uh, simple, darker. Uh, put them into shadow. And that's kind of what I'm doing here now. Also, it's a great opportunity to make any kind of subtle color tweaks. That, that could be necessary. Does this color need to be a little bit cooler? Does this color over here need to be a little bit warmer as a result? So I'm doing a lot of balancing at this stage, which this, this again, can be done at any point. I like to do it either before I add all the final details and after I have all the major elements blocked in, kind of right here. Alternatively, you could do uh, additional tweaks. And I think a lot of people do do uh, some additional tweaks like this, kind of at the very end as well, just to see if there's any last minute shapes that need to be uh, pushed or pulled. And so that's why I'm using the, the selection tool, the, the magic wand, so I can make very clear distinctive silhouettes of shapes where I need to, to push and pull dirt, uh, certain elements. And when you have a scene as busy as this, that is going to be your key to victory. You know, it, seeing like just shapes of spears and hands flailing, maybe helmets in the background, you can imply a lot with actually detailing very little in a scene like this, and, and that's the goal. So I, I, I kind of warm things up a little bit, but I'm also kind of layering in another layer of cool colors. That way, when you have cool on warm or warm on, warm on cool, and you have a little bit of the color, uh, um, the receding color, or the or the the weaker color kind of underneath, and you have that dominating color that you overlay on top of it, I feel that's usually a really strong way to get a lot of nice little subtle color changes in a painting like this. So you're looking at the difference to see if I'm liking and you know, like I did like the cooler colors. So even though I have a little bit more purples and stuff in there now, I'm going back to fight for a little bit of those blues. So I'm again I'm making some more shapes to clean them up and I'll be making some further adjustments to make all those 
read a little bit better and almost to like sap a little of that color out. I, I put a little too much in. And when I say something like that, I put too much in. This is all just like my gut feelings because every artist is going to interpret a scene like this differently. Every artist is going to want to approach it a little differently. So I can take what I say with a grain of salt. This is all my personal preferences, uh, tastes, and style decisions. So anything I say, of course, is not a be-all, end-all. I always have to put that disclaimer into something like this. So see, now I'm going back out of the shapes I already drew, and I'm adding a little bit more blue to them. So see, a little bit blue, a little bit blue. That way, the colors that have a little purple in them, you know, closer to the foreground, will pop forward a little bit. These colors that I'm adding a little bit of cooler blue to will recede further back in the background. This is how colors tend to work. The warmer colors always want to push forward. Uh, and while while pushing the cooler ones into the background, so again, I'm doing another little a little pass of balancing, so taking a little of that color out, and now what I can do is basically paint some of that light back into it that we originally started with, blooming in from the background, almost like a fog, a mist, or just some haze. It'll add a little bit to the atmosphere of a piece like this, and pushing a little bit of that. And if you're doing a scene like this, I definitely suggest if you're making a lot of selections and if they're of important selections, to save them so you can re-select uh, uh, re, uh, things very easily. So now I'm just adding all the last little bit of highlights and lighting glares. I like to kind of approach lighting like that uh, kind of in a few different steps, but I definitely need these shapes pop and I need that armor to feel like it's a little bit more like a metal. So the material was not working quite yet. Not for me. Not since I overpainted it. It was probably even better a little in your original one. See, I just need just to come in and spot treat a few of these uh, specular highlights, and then that way it'll really feel metallic, and then I can push and pull things back later at a, at a detail phase if it gets there. But it's, you know, in terms of, like, my suggestions for this student, it's it's it would be nearly there, and I, for, for a lot of uh, artists, it can be, are you, are you fine? with something a little bit more uh, painterly or uh, impressionistic and loose, or are you gonna go for a really tight and detailed illustration? Now, if you are going for something, uh, you know, like an extremely tight and detailed illustration, it's just on top of what's here, the, the foundation's good. I think you're definitely good to go, and it's just a matter of putting hours of, of work into finessing edge work, spot, you know, detailing little highlights, and simplifying further what needs to be and making, of course, the shapes absolutely uh, clear. That That's anyway what I would do personally if, if I were going to take this to like a Magic the Gathering level in terms of quality. It's, it's just, it's all in the detail and the polish, particularly with them and of course to get the big shapes to read. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know if you have any questions below and uh, take care. I will also be at Aluxicon this weekend, probably in a hat and some sort of black shirt, probably with the Brush Sauce logo. If you see me walking around, uh, you say hi, stop in if you're a fan of the show. I am just going to be on the floor. I'm not going to get a table, so I'll be doing lots of laps and making rounds. So message me, contact me on Facebook, whatever. If, if you're around and you want to meet up, be sure to happy to chat with you. Take care. Thanks for watching, particularly if you made it to the end here. If you'd like to support the channel, please like, share, and comment. You can find me on Facebook, ArtStation, and Instagram. Now, I share different content on each platform, so feel free to stalk me across the web. Feel free to join the Brush Sauce community as linked below. We do hangouts, have a Discord channel, host challenges, and support each other in artistic growth. Finally, if you'd like to inquire about my one-on-one -on -one mentorship program, head over to tyleredlinart.com, click on the Mentorship tab for information, and shoot me an email. Also, I run two courses at the Computer Graphics Master Academy, Feel free to check out those as well. Take care.